Oh. It was, yeah. So now they have the, the, the new four in place. I know you said Stu stayed back in, in Hamburg or in Germany. And yes. so now you've got John, Paul, George, and Ringo. Uh, and they still couldn't get a record deal. So what happened with Brian Epstein? Brian Epstein tried, every, can you imagine this? We're talking about the Beatles. He tried every record company. No thanks, no thanks. Finally went to Decca Records. And he says, uh, Dick Rowe was his name, an A&R guy. And he says to Brian, he says, Brian, Groups of guitars are out, you know, forget these guys. It's not going to happen. And Brian, very dismayed because every time he go back, the Beatles would be waiting. Come on, Brian, what's the news? And the news was, sorry. Finally, on a last ditch effort, he went to an EMI affiliate, the parent company of Parlophone. Parlophone was a small label that really did comedy. In fact, one of their... Uh, biggest artists w were called The Goons, which included Peter Sellers and Spike Milligan. Now, how ironic, the Beatles, John Lennon in particular, was a huge Goons fan. So here they got to meet the guy that recorded The Goons, you know, but, but again, another improbable situation, except for there's a man named George Martin, who, as you know, is beyond genius. He just had a certain understanding of music and when he saw the Beatles he was thinking now how do I do this because in the past it was always again like Cass and the Casanovas or you know Tommy Quickly there was always a lead guy and a band and John singing and then Paul singing and they're kind of night and day and he's thinking what am I going to do here he goes why not just take them as they are and, and take a chance with it which is what allowed the Beatles to be the Beatles. So George Martin ended up hearing the, the DECA audition tapes that, that he, they were rejected for, right? So why would, why would somebody like George decide to take him over those reject? He didn't know they were, had been rejected, right? I, th I think he might have known, but you know, George had an open mind, a very creative uh, person, but he brought them in for their own test. Mm -hmm. And they did songs like, you know, Besame, besame mucho, and George thought, okay, well, and he said the best song they came up with was Love Me Do. He said, we'll go with that one. Hmm. He said what really sold them was their personalities. And George at the end goes, if there's anything that you don't like, please let me know. And George goes, well, I don't like a tie. <laughs> and George thought, cheeky boys. But again, something spoke to his inner mind and said, give him a shot. So that artist test was in June of 62, and then yes. he booked them to come back in early September to, in earnest, go ahead and record Love Me Do as a single. Right, and <clears throat> Ringo was part of the band, but having heard Pete Best before and having Ringo come in and George needed to keep his job, says, I'm going to record you boys, but we're going to use our drummer, a guy named Andy White, who was a professional, to do Love Me Do and the B-side being... Uh, P.S. Right. Yeah. As I write this letter, send my love to you. Remember that I'll always be in love with you. And they handed Ringo a tambourine and said, you can play along. And Ringo never quite got over that, but that was the business back then. Yeah, because already they had replaced Pete with him, and now he's thinking I'm being replaced I'm next. with yeah. this next guy. Yeah, because the drummer, they think, doesn't matter, obviously. Right. He but. says, you, you can play live with whoever you want, but for my record, it's going to be Andy White. So then Love Me Do gets recorded in the two different sessions, and uh, they released uh, Andy's as the single, but Ringo's is that also available. Yeah, Ringo did actually do a drummed version that's on record that you can find, and you can hear and feel the difference. You know, Andy's a little bit more straight ahead, and Ringo's got a little bit more of that Ringoism in the it. The main way that I heard you could tell is the one that you can clearly hear the tambourine on. Yeah. You know it's Ringo standing there playing tambourine. Playing tambourine, yeah. absolutely. So anyway, Love Me Do, I guess uh, Parlophone said, okay, we'll release it, and then how did it become a hit? Because there was probably no radio play for it, maybe one little radio station. They did have a huge following in Liverpool, but Brian was going to assure that something happened so word is that he <laughs> bought 10,000 copies. He owned a record store, right? <laughs> of the record to make sure that it made a mark as far as sales went. Now, it was enough to get them their next recording. 
So they go back in November and they record another song and, and they had been influenced by other writers and artists as well too. Yes, I'm, I'm standing to get a pick, so. Um, there was a song. How do you do what you do to me? I wish I knew. If you do what you do, I do it to you. That's the song that George Hanneman said, this is going to be a number one hit. And John and Paul went, Ugh. Now they did a recording of it, and you can find it, but they did it half-heartedly. They, they just didn't like it. They wanted to do their own stuff, and they were cheeky enough and bold enough to say, George, we really want to do our own. Now, no group in, at that time would ever be so bold as to say that. That'd be the end of them. And George, being wise enough, said, okay, fine, you come back with a better song, and we'll do it. So John rushes home. Now, at the time, there were huge Roy Orbison fans as well. You know, pretty woman. <laughs> Won't you find me? And they even toured with Roy, as you know, in 63. So John decided to write a song that was kind of Roy Orbison-like, and it was kind of slow and little thing, you know? Come on, come on, come on, come on, please me, whoa, yeah, like I please you. And George Martin goes, uh, fine, but... Could you speed it up? You know, <laughs> then it became. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Please, please, oh yeah, I got please. He said, "Boys, you just recorded your first number one record. 